everyone, Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, September 15th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Lucid Motors held their technology and manufacturing day at their factory in Casa Grande, Arizona this past week. They outlined the company's technology advancements, which will apply to future products as well as manufacturing cost efficiencies they've realized so far. During the presentation, Lucid unveiled a new drive unit called Atlas. They plan to put it to use in 2026 to propel a new mid-size platform. They hope to use this drive unit to improve the cost of the Gravity SUV and Air sedan somewhere down the line. Lucid claims the Atlas drive units will be more cost effective than today's hardware, but offered no further information related to its performance. While discussing the upcoming Gravity SUV, Lucid confirmed it will feature a next generation UX with an augmented reality head-up display to follow. They also announced that Gravity will have a native North American charging standard port, enabling it to top up at over 15,000 Tesla superchargers nationwide. Gravity's start of production is slated to begin before the end of the year. CEO Peter Rawlinson also mentioned they are on track to manufacture 9,000 vehicles this year, which is roughly 50% more than they delivered in 2023. At the end of the presentation, they teased a mid-size electric SUV scheduled for late 2026 with a projected starting price of under $50,000. Lucid makes one of the most efficient and impressive EV powertrains in the business with impressive range and charging speeds, but so far they've been a very low volume player. Will the Gravity SUV put them in a position to compete more squarely with BMW and Mercedes? Will the mid-sized platform see them to profitability? General Motors and Hyundai Motor Group have announced a signed Memorandum of Understanding to explore future collaborations in passenger and commercial vehicle co-development and material sourcing for areas like battery raw materials and steel. With Hyundai Group being the number two best-selling EV manufacturer in the USA, the partnership could help GM to offer more competitive EVs. GM claims the title of America's largest automaker, and Hyundai could probably benefit from their significant domestic battery production. Most GM EV purchases qualify for the full $7,500 federal tax credit because of their North American manufacturing and material sourcing. Today, Hyundai buyers claim the full credit through the lease loophole, but typically miss out when buying. Hyundai has been offering a $7,500 credit out of their own pockets to stay competitive. We recently reported that this situation will improve for Hyundai as new U.S.-based supply comes online. Back in 2022, GM projected they would be producing 1.2 million cells per day by 2025. They also projected the production of 400,000 EVs in North America from 2022 through the first half of 2024. They said they'd make 1 million EVs annually in North America by 2025. But in their most recent quarterly earnings presentation, they revealed a target to produce and wholesale 200 to 250,000 EVs in 2024. Those figures represent an 80% shortfall. Last month, we heard from former Tesla executive Kurt Kelty, who is now the vice president of batteries at GM. He mentioned that the Ohio plant alone is currently producing nearly 100 million cells annually, nearly 275,000 daily. We recently reported about the Tennessee, Michigan, and Indiana plants, which could certainly help the company move towards previous EV volume goals if they remain motivated to do so. An Equinox EV with the smallest battery pack contains 240 cells. The Ohio plant could support up to 416,000 Equinox EVs annually. The Ohio plant supplies enough cells to produce 167,000 maximum range GM pickup trucks and SUVs. They require about 600 cells each. As we covered in episode 26 of The Current, Hyundai laid out their updated EV strategy with a focus on developing a new software-defined vehicle and zonal architecture. Both Hyundai and General Motors have recently announced they would be producing hybrid models as well. Toyota's chairman is expected to visit South Korea and meet with Hyundai executives next month. Will they be the next to strike a deal with Hyundai Motor Group? Could Hyundai be destined to outperform Volkswagen in global sales anytime soon? GM has mentioned their goal to reduce the cell cost for the next generation of its Ultium batteries to under $70 per kilowatt hour by mid to late decade. Current costs are around $100 per kilowatt hour. GM had previously had a partnership with Honda to produce affordable EVs, but the two terminated that venture back in October. 
It seems that General Motors has been looking for a partner to improve their vehicle development and costs for quite some time. Is Hyundai going to be the ticket to their success? This week, General Motors also announced that their energy division will work with longtime partner EVgo to deploy 400 charging dispensers in major metropolitan areas across the U.S., including states such as Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Michigan, New York, and Texas. The companies say most of the flagship stations will have up to 20 350 kilowatt fast charging dispensers and include features like canopies, security cameras, and pull-through stalls near amenities like shopping and dining. The first location is expected to open sometime next year. The two companies are on track to activate their 2,000th stall together by the end of 2024. At least 850 more are scheduled to come online by 2025 and beyond. Many of you who comment on our videos say that EV affordability is a major hurdle for drivers who want to go electric. A California incentive geared towards low-income residents could make it possible for more to afford an EV. The Driving Clean Assistance Program has set aside $242 million for eligible drivers to receive EV grants and loan assistance in exchange for scrapping their internal combustion engine vehicles. Eligible participants can receive up to a $12,000 grant to purchase or lease a new or used EV, as well as $2,000 for charging hardware costs. The funds can be used for cars, motorcycles, or e-bikes. Applicants must be at or below 300% of the federal poverty level. For a family of four, that threshold works out to $93,600. If applicants don't have a vehicle to scrap, they can receive up to $7,500 towards a mobility option like car sharing. Participants must maintain ownership of the newer vehicle for at least 30 months. Scrapped vehicles must be 2009 or older and powered by gasoline or diesel fuel. They have to have a gross vehicle weight rating under 10,000 pounds and pass a functionality test. The replacement EV must be California Air Resources Board listed as eligible and purchased in California from an authorized dealership. The price cap is $45,000. Used vehicles less than eight years old do qualify as long as they have no more than 75,000 miles on the odometer. Since this is a state incentive, it's likely that the federal point of sale credit of up to $7,500 can also be stacked for nearly $20,000 in savings. This means many brand new EVs will effectively cost less than $20,000, a magic number for many buyers. Applications are scheduled to open within the next few months. If you want to learn more about this program or share it with anyone that could benefit, I'll put a link in the description below to the website that has all the information regarding the Driving Clean Assistance Program. Many of you tuned in last week for my detailed review of the California-built Rivet Anthem electric motorcycle. This week, I sat down for an interview with the company's founder and CEO to discuss the challenges he and his team overcame, the state of EV sales today, and even got the scoop on products Rivet is working on, which have not yet been publicly announced. I think it was a great interview and an inspiring story. You can check it out as part of our In Charge interview series over at the Misco Electric Industry Channel and in podcast form on Spotify. I'll add a link in the description below. Well, that's all for today's episode. If you found value in The Current, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online. Why not join me on other social media platforms like X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up-to-the-minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.